Okay, so we're back again. We're going to take a look at a couple of problems in trigonometry. And the first problem we're going to look at deals with the law of cosines and an application of the law of sines. So let's, uh, let's draw a triangle. We'll make it a scalene triangle so that none of the sides are equal. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. Okay. So we have side A, B, C, and that's all we're given. We're given that A is equal to, let's see what we got here, 9, B is equal to 11, well, let's say 7, and C is equal to 11. All right, this is just hypothetical. Actually, let's do this the other way around. B is longer anyway, so B and 7. So what we want is this angle. And we want to find all the angles. So the law of cosines, remember, is b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos B. And we had derived that formula from dropping a vertical down and then applying the Pythagorean theorem to the two triangles. And that's how we got this formula. So given these, we have b squared is 9 squared equals 7 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 7 times 11 cos b. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. We're going to be doing inverse functions and so on. So here we have 81. Ah. So this is 80, 81 equals 49 plus what's 11 squared? 121, I think. 11, 11, 121. 121 minus 14 times 11. Let's make some room here. I can draw 14 and 14. That's 154. So it's minus 154 cosine B. So, now we 
bring these values on the other side. So let's see. 121 and 49 is times 7. 170 minus... Okay, so we have 81 minus 170 equals minus 154 cosine of B. So minus 81 10 16 so that is 9 89 let's see 89 89 and 81 that's 10 16 170 so we're we check out all right so we have negative 89 divided by negative 154 equals cosine of B. And now, all we have to do, you can see that these are positive, because two negatives make a positive. We have this ratio, 89 over 154. It's almost uh, one half. Um, this is equal to cosine B. We'll just erase this. And we realize that the angle B, B, is equal to the inverse cosine of 89 over 154. So we'll grab my calculator here just one second. Okay, back again, and we have 89 divided by 154, and that gives us 0.57, and the inverse cosine gives us B equals 54.7. Degrees when I round it up. So we got one angle, but then what's A? Well, remember B on sine B is equal to A sine A. Well, we have three of the pieces of information. We will write down B equals 54.7 degrees. And we have this law of signs that we can use. So sine A A is equal to B on A. Let's see. Wait a second. I'm getting mixed up here. Uh, that goes that way. So A sine B over B. And sine B, just make sure I got it right, and sine A is equal to A is 7, B 
is 9 and sine of B is sine of 54.7 degrees and that equals let me bring out our calculator again this is 0.81 so we got 7 9 times point eight one six times seven divided by nine and this is equal to point six three five zero point six three five so in order to find a we have to take the inverse so we have a equals the inverse or arc sine of 0.635 and that equals 39.4 degrees 39.4 so a equals 39.4 and we can do that for sine c we can apply the law of sines again or we could say that a plus b plus c equals 180 so C equals 180 minus A minus B is equal to 180 minus, well, A and B, that's 1, that's 14, 8, 9, that's 94 degrees, so 94.1. And that's equal to 180 uh, 0 minus 94.1. That's 10, 9, 17. Okay, that's 9, 5, and 8. 85.9 degrees 85.9 degrees and that's what C would be but we can also check it out using the law of sines to see if it comes out the same so remember the law of sines says Okay, let's take a look at the law of sines. The law of sines says A on sine A is equal to B on sine B is equal to C on sine C. Let's put our answer up here for C. that we had calculated using our knowledge of E5.9 degrees. And let's see how the law of sines works for us. So let's try A. A sine A equals C sine C. Well, sine C is equal to C on A sine A. And that is equal to 
11 on 7 sine of a. Well, what's the sine of a? Well, a is 39. Okay, a is 39.4 degrees. So that's point six three five and that is equal times eleven divided by seven that's equal to point zero point nine nine seven well remember the sign of 90 is equal to 1 so we're close to 90 so 85 is pretty close to 90 so it looks like we're in the ballpark so we'll just now take the inverse sign so we got arc sign of point nine nine seven four let's erase this so it doesn't it doesn't uh, screw us up okay and we take the arc sign of that And we have 85.9. Well, we round it up. So, we got it using two different approaches. One using the law of sines, and one using that the sum of the interior triangles is 180 degrees. So now we have everything we need to know about this triangle. We have all the sides and we have all the angles. So the sides are 7, 9, and 11 and we have all the angles 54, 39, and 85.9. So that's the utility of the law of cosines and the law of sines in order to help us out understanding when we're given limited information. So that's, uh, that's one way we can use the law of cosines. Now, let's take a look at another problem. What if we're given the situation where tan of, whoops, can't spell it, tan of theta is equal to 3 on 4. Well, when we draw our right triangle Tangent means we have y, x, and r. It means y over x is equal to tangent theta, and we're given that y over x is 3, 
fourths. So three fourths. And we want to know what theta is. Well, first off, let's uh, let's see what the series of problems are. Okay, we're given what is cosine? What is the cosine of theta? B. What is the sine of theta? What is the cotangent of theta? What is the sine of 90 minus theta. And lastly, what is the secant of theta? So, we're given these problems with this condition. So, what is critical for us to find out is what r is and r is r is 4 squared plus 3 squared equals r squared <clears throat> that's 16 plus 9 equals r squared 25 equals r squared, so r equals 5. This is a special kind of triangle called a 3-4-5 triangle. We've seen it already. So r is 5. So we put that in there. And what is cosine theta? Well, cos cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's equal to 4 fifths. And 4 fifths is equal to 0.8. What is the sine of theta? Well, the sine of theta is opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's 3 over 5, and that's equal to 0.6. What is the cotangent of theta? Well, that's the inverse of tangent theta, so it's 1 over tangent theta, 1 over tangent theta, and that's equal to 4 over 3, and, oops, it's 1, 1, 0, 0 0.33, it goes on 1.333 forever. What is sine of 90 minus theta? Well, we have here, we have 90 degrees, and this is, this is equal to beta, okay, and beta, beta plus theta plus 90 equals 180 degrees. But beta plus theta equals 90. So what we're going to have to do to get sine of beta, okay, this is beta is equal, beta is equal to 90 minus theta. So that's the sine of the angle we want. 
So we've shown that beta is 90 minus theta. What's the sine of beta? Well, the sine of sine of 90 minus theta is equal to the sine of beta. And that's equal to the opposite of beta over the hypotenuse. So that's equal to 4 fifths. And that's also equal to the cosine of theta. Same answer. And we have one last problem. What is the secant of theta? Well, the secant is just simply 1 over the cosine. So we have cosine, cos, whoops. Well, I'm not doing too well with this pen. Cosine, cosine theta is equal to 4 over 5. Secant theta is equal to 1 over the cosine of theta, which is equal to 5 over 4. And I think if we want to carry that out, 4, 1, 0, 0, 0. Let's see, uh, 1.2825, that's equal to 1.25. So there we have the second problem. <clears throat> and all it goes back to is knowing the fundamental definition of the trigonometric functions and using a right triangle to be able to help us solve some of the problems. Really not so difficult. And uh, so we'll stop it temporarily at this point and we'll solve some more problems in a little bit. Okay, so what if we're given cosine is equal to a over b? Well, we draw our right triangle. And we use our definitions to solve some problems. We know that x, y, and r, where cosine of theta, cosine of theta is equal to a over b, but it's also x over r. So we have a, whoops, a, and we have B. And what's this? So that is A squared. A squared plus Y squared equals B squared. Y equals B squared minus A squared. So that's what our Y value is. So we have square root of b squared minus a squared. And we're given a bunch of problems here. We're given what is the sine of theta? Of theta. What is the tangent? 
of theta. What is the secant of theta? And what is the tangent of 90 minus theta? Well, sine of theta is opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to b squared minus a squared over b. So that's what we have as an answer. And I lost my rag here. Tangent theta is y over x. So tangent theta is b squared minus a squared over a. The secant is basically 1 over the cosine of theta. So it's b over a. And lastly, the tangent of 90 minus theta. But 90 minus theta remember is this angle up here because phi is equal to 90 minus theta so tangent of minus theta is the tangent of phi and that is equal to a over square root of b squared b squared minus a squared and we have all of them and you can see that this is just the inverse of the tangent so tangent yeah that's right it's the same as the cotangent of theta. So that was a, a pretty simple problem to work our way through using basic definitions. And here we're given another problem. If sine of theta is equal to n. What is the cosine of theta? The tangent of theta and the sine of 90 minus theta. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to try and freehand this. So we have our right triangle And by de definition, y, x, and r, but sine of theta is equal to y over r, and that's equal to n. So, for us to do so, r would have to be equal to 1. So we have 1, we have n, and we have 1 minus n squared. And that's theta. So and that's because x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if r is 1, and 
n squared x squared plus n squared so we have x equals the square root of 1 minus n squared so that's how we got that side and now we can go and find our answers cosine of theta cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse so it's equal to 1 minus n squared we just leave out the divided by 1 because it's does it's trivial tangent theta tangent theta is equal to y over x so that is n over 1 minus n squared the sine of 90 minus theta well that's phi that's equal to the sine of phi and that is this opposite over the hypotenuse so again that's 1 minus n squared also the same as cosine of theta and then lastly the cosecant cosecant of theta which happens to be 1 over the sine of theta and 1 over the sine of theta is 1 over n so we solved all of those questions in just a couple of minutes the key here is what are the basic definitions and this was the key right here to solving all of the all of the questions and realizing what the fundamental definitions are so if you really understand the fundamental definitions of the trigonometric functions you can solve every problem very simply and that's the beauty of trigonometry it's just a, an amazing subject okay now our last problem is going to be a little different let's say given given sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half what are a let's say one the sine of 150 degrees to the sine of 210 degrees 3 the cosine of 120 degrees 4 the cosine of 330 degrees 5 the tangent of 210 degrees and 6 the tangent of 300 degrees and I think they're oh my 
7, the sine of minus 30 degrees, 8. Boy, they're really giving it to us. 8. The cosine of minus 30 degrees, and 9. The tangent. Oops. The tangent of minus 30 degrees. So, let's take a look. We're going to have to look at a full revolution. Okay, so thirty degrees, thirty degrees. This is ninety degrees. This is one eighty. This is two seventy. And this is 360 all the way around. And we were given that the sine was one half. So y over r is one over two. That means that x squared plus y squared equals r squared x squared equals 4 minus 1 equals 3 so x equals the square root of 3 that's a, an important result so this down here, this base right here on x is square root of 3. Now, the sine of 150 degrees. Well, 150 degrees is 30 degrees less than 180. So, we Basically, I don't know how I'm going to do this without messing everything up. But basically, that's a mirror image of that. Did our best. This is 150. If we go all the way around, that's 150. But that's also 30 degrees. When you measure it off of this, off of that negative x axis. So, 150 plus 30 is 180. <clears throat> so we have here, we have a height 1 and we have 2. And so the sine of 180 degrees is opposite over the hypotenuse is equal to 100 is equal to one half now sine of 210 well 210 is 30 degrees 180 
180 plus 30 is 210. So 210 is 30 degrees below It's our complementary angle, basically, to 30 degrees. We have negative 1, and this is a magnitude of 2. And so this is this is 210, this is 180 all the way around, plus 30, that's 210 degrees. So this is 30, but this is minus 1 over, this, over 2, so that's equal to minus 1 over 2. And this is how we can show where the functions are negative and where they're positive, what quadrants. Okay. Try not to mess too, things up too much. Cosine of 120. So, 120 is 30 plus 90. So 120 would be 30 degrees okay and we're going to I'm going to erase these because they just make it a little harder to see we got our angles already So this all the way around is 120 so if So, if the sine of this 30 is 2 over 1, what is this? Well, this would be 90. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 60. 60, 60, 60. 60. So what we would have, let's see, 1 over 2 for that, okay, and this would be square root of 3, so this would be 1 over So, cosine of 120 is equal to 1 half. 
but that's uh, negative one. I'm sorry, negative one, negative one, because that's negative one. That over that two. Okay, so now that's the solution for that. 3.30. Well, what's 3.30? 3.30 is almost all the way around. I'm starting to erase all of my critical stuff. So, this is square root of 3. All right. So, 330 is 30 degrees, 30 degrees below the x-axis, which is 360 degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is 2 negative 1 and we have cosine all right so we have square root of 3 over 2 so we have square root of 3 over 2 for 330 degrees starting to get the hang of it <laughs> um, we're gonna just take a two seconds here and make sure I got everything correct at this point so far okay so so far we're in good shape this is not a trivial problem actually because it goes right back to the fundamental definitions of the sines and cosines but as they apply to different quadrants quadrant one quadrant two quadrant three and quadrant four okay so yep yeah. We'll call it quits at this point.